Hey everybody, it's Andy. Thursday Live Office Hours time. Let's help you build a career you love. But today, I gotta thank you. I, I gotta thank you first. Looks like everything's going. Just double check in here. Want to say hello. And just, I just, I spent the last couple days looking back on this year. And we are in our 119th live show of the year and tomorrow we're capping it off with 120 and it just it, I, I do a lot of reflecting around this time of year I hope you're doing the same thing and I just want to thank you it has been an absolute joy between these live office hour sessions the careers and coffee sessions the special events the multi-day workshops the webcasts the boot camps the leadership monthly sessions I I love it and I can't thank you enough for all your attention you've all made me a better coach way beyond anything you can imagine probably do it unknowingly but I just gotta say thanks and I also think that your attention is the greatest gift you can give anybody so I just I want to thank you for all the attention and time and effort that you put in for yourselves but also that you share it with me I mean it it's 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 good stuff it really is and I got a lot of good stuff coming for you in the new year. But today, uh, I've got a, a lesson, and uh, we're going to do a great Q&A, and uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So so, so welcome. Uh, get in the chat. Say hi. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what you do. Tell me what you need. And uh, put some question marks in front of it, because we're going to have a good Q&A after I go through this, maybe what will be about a maybe 14, 15 minute lesson. So today, we're going to talk about what's going on inside organizations right now. So today, if you're here with me live, it's December 19th, my four-year wedding anniversary. Uh, so shout out to Mrs. La Savita, Miss Linda. She's probably teaching her, her third graders right now. I, I loved, have loved every minute of my life with you, babe. Uh, but for everybody else who's celebrating my, my anniversary with me, it's December right now. Maybe you're watching this on the replay in January. Everything I'm about to say about what's going on inside organizations right now, it applies. It'll, it'll be applying for the next six, eight weeks. Uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll put this on the reruns for you. So I want to I wanna talk about what's happening. I want to talk about what that looks like. I'm going to give you some, some case study some stories about what's going on inside of companies and I also want to tell you how you can take advantage of this to use it to your advantage if you are looking for a job so we're gonna we're gonna hit those we're gonna hit those I got three points at the end of things that I want you to do to tailor your job search your job search so so let's think about this like I said it's December and what are you doing right now? I mean, aside from watching me, whether you're here with me live or you're watching this on the recording, what are you doing right now? I just got done, the kind of the speech bubble still hanging out of my mouth and I was talking about reflecting. I had to look back at the year. I was thinking about what I was doing. Uh, can I get a show of hands or a, a knock in the chat? What are you doing right now? What, what is typical that a lot of people do at the end of the year, right? They reflect. They think about what's happened. They think about the changes they want to make in their lives. They think about the upcoming year and all that good stuff, right? Maybe you're setting some goals, right? We got some good goal stuff coming for you here soon too, right? Let me know what you're doing in the chat. And so think about it. Companies are, are no different. They're no different. And I don't care when their fiscal year ends. There's something about December and January that makes all companies Think about the new year. And I'm going to explain why that's the case. But they look back, right? They look at the results. They think about their quotas and their targets and their people and the hiring they did and the process that they put in. They think about it. They think about what do they need to do from a planning perspective to go into the next year. And it's a very, very dynamic time right now. And they, they rethink, they plan, they set their goals, and they look at the whole year. They, 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 they really do. And I want to give you, I want to give you a couple stories to illustrate this. 
Uh, one story, and I don't think I told this story last year, but about a year ago, we had a, a client of mine. Actually, it was somebody who was a client for a number of years. He left his organization, opened up his own company, started to grow that, and had been running it for three or four years or so. Had reached out to me almost almost to the day, almost to the day, and, uh, and, and, and said, hey, Annie, would you mind spending an hour or two with me? I'd love to pick your brain organizationally about my, or my company. I also might need you to help me, you and Milewalk, help me recruit some people. It's no problem. We get on a, a Zoom session with uh, uh, one or two of his lieutenants and, and me. We spent 90 minutes. Over the course of the 90 minutes, he explained to me that he was just about to win a new contract, which was the biggest one in his, in his company's history. And this is going to require him to hire more people. It was a consulting company, so he was going to need more consulting resources to do this. But he said, but more importantly than knowing I need more consultants to help me implement these solutions is I've got a leadership layer that I have a couple people in place. I know I need more people, but I'm also a little confused about whether I'm leveraging the people that we currently have in the right spots. So I'm not sure that everybody's doing the right things uh, reg you know, related to their skill level. So would you mind talking with me and helping me understand what you would do if this was your company? So I'm not gonna take you through the long 90 minute session. What I want you to know as part of this discussion is that within an hour, we laid out what his new organizational structure should look like, how he needs to move a few people around, how he needs to rearrange some of the roles, meaning like cut people's roles in half, replace them with different activities, take some of the things that they're doing, give them to a new person who's got more experience in those areas. He needed to hire four people at the, at the executive level and so on. And the reason that this is important for you to recognize that this occurs extensively, especially in small to medium-sized companies at this time of year. And what this does is it creates this incredibly dynamic environment where things are changing almost on a daily basis, not necessarily in a haphazard way, but the fact that between one day and the next, this individual, this CEO, he changed his organizational structure. He knew he was going to have to hire more people. And that's going to change as he hires those people based on who he hires, the skills that he or she has that they bring to the table and how the organizational structure may evolve over the next few months or maybe even the entire first quarter. So, and, and, and let's not even get into the fact that this is a planned organizational restructuring or a planned scaling of sorts. Right, because there's a lot of unplanned things too. We'll get to that in a second. Here's another, here's another story. Yesterday, so Wednesday, I uh, spent the morning with a $100 million construction company in the Chicagoland area. And they are getting primed to grow about 30%. They can already foresee some of the contracts that they have. They, they've, they've put plans in place. I met with the CEO, the president, and the two divisional vice, vice presidents. So four, the four top guys in the company. And now this is a construction company. There's seasonality to this. And in the, in the late spring and the summer is when they really, really ramp up a lot of their construction. But we're talking about it right now. They were looking back at some of the hires that they made throughout the year. And while they felt like they were pretty good at interviewing, they made a couple of mishires. And while it wasn't an excessive number of mishires, it was the particular people that they hired that because it was a mishire, there was a rippling effect that, that caused a, a good amount of damage. And they were trying to foresee uh, how many individuals they would have to be interviewing in order to hire, say, 10 more people in the May time frame. It's five months from now. They're already thinking about it now. The fiscal year doesn't even close at the end of the year. They're one of those organizations that has a, has a fiscal year at a different month throughout the year. But what do they know? They know they got to get out ahead of it. They know for some reason, something's in the water, December and January, people want to do a lot of thinking. Also, organizations know, they know a couple of things about the new year. They know, number one, that it is a highly mobile time of year where a lot of people are leaving. So while these two organizations, these little stories I told you, these are organizations that are deliberately planning and trying to be proactive and get out in front of what it is they want to do. 
What happens when there's something they have to react to? What happens this time of year? Not only are our employers hiring, but employers are hiring pieces, right? They're being moved around, right? The individuals are being moved around, which means somebody might leave my company who I didn't know was going to be leaving. And now I'm in a panic because one of my most instrumental individuals decided to leave me the third week of January because she's miffed because she didn't get a bigger bonus or I didn't give her the promotion or the raise or the whatever, right? So this kind of stuff happens. And organizations like this construction company that knew it needed to hire people in May, they recognize that not everybody is going to be moving in May. So there's a lot of people who might might be thinking about changing jobs now. They want to make sure that they're trying to find the right talent. So what does this all mean to you? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, there's dynamic natures to what's happening inside the organizations. Companies are planning, they're replanning, they're acting and reacting. That means it's a it's a volatile, not necessarily in a bad way, a volatile time where organizations are hiring and and they're trying new things. Okay. Now I want you to I want you to uh, I want you to grab on a couple of concepts here. So mm, got my can I help you uh, mug. Now one of the things that they know is they are going to have to react as much as they are deliberate in what they do. Organizations know that they're going to need to react to things. Are you getting in front of them in this time where there is a lot of thinking going on? Because there is never a better time where their minds, their corporate minds, are more malleable than right now. Think about when you are considering something. What are you doing? You're, you're trying to plan. You're trying to assess. You're thinking about what might happen. You're about to go into this state of mind where you're open to ideas. And they are much, much more receptive to people that they're starting to see now. There's a heightened sense of awareness. They will take a closer look at you if you send your information to them now. They will because they're more active because they're not quite sure what they're going to see. They're not quite sure exactly what they want. So the more you can get in front of them, that's a good thing while their minds, while their corporate minds are malleable. The second thing that I want you to remember about this time of year is when you try, what happens when you try new things? I don't know about you, but whenever I try something new, I break it or I break stuff. Like in, I don't know, in a couple of weeks, this whole floor is going to be filled with stuff that I broke because I tried new things, because I was excited to do this, right? I want to make some changes. I want to make some improvements. And I don't know if you've ever heard that expression, like, if, you know, if it's not broken, break it. Well, it's kinda, that's kind of how I think. That's kind of how a lot of companies think. They want to try new things because they want to they grow and they want to be more creative. Well, what happens whenever somebody knows they're about to break something? I don't know about you. I would just love for my stocks in the stock market to rise, rise, rise very highly, and I don't want any risk of downside, right? I don't ever want the market to go down. I just, I want all the good and none of the bad. So what a lot of employers do is if they make an organizational mistake and they break something, or maybe they plan for something that doesn't turn out exactly how they wanted, what do they want? Somebody who can fix it. Who can fix it? A versatile person can fix it. And by versatile, I mean people that have multiple skill sets that if I choose wrong or I start out wrong or I decide I want to change my mind, if I've got somebody who's versatile, who's got skills in multiple areas, multifunctional, or that can kind of span the spectrum or the evolution of the career grades, that's the person that I want in case I'm wrong. And Versatile people are at a premium in the early months of the year. You gotta recognize that. Who cannot fix my organizational misstep? A one trick pony. So if I hire somebody that's got one skill, they're an ace at it, but they've only got one skill, and I plan for and get it wrong, now I can't do anything with this person. That person, this is this is their skill. So why am I telling you all this? Because there's some things that I want you to do recognizing this is happening and it's happening a lot. And any of you that are out there that are in hiring capacities or have influence over units, I'm guessing you're probably nodding with me like, yeah, this happens to me every year. And it should. 
it's, it's not a terrible thing, but this is different than throughout the year where it's the middle of the summertime and I need a person who knows this exact programming language, who this, they are, they are the best at this one thing. Sure, things have fallen, right? They've fallen apart. We fixed them. We're on our way, right? That's just the cycle. It's the evolution that goes, that goes on, right? The construction company knows that it's got to do all of its project planning early in the year because the implementation occurs in the warmer months and the estimates have to be right. You got to get the right contractors. The time frames need to be correct, right? So, 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 so think about that. I have a little bit more, I, I could take a little bit more care in getting the one skilled pony, the two skilled pony. But in the beginning of the year, when I'm still trying to figure things out, the more versatile the person, the better. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind. So here's, here's what I want you to do. I've given you a couple of assets out there that allow you to target organizations where there really isn't a job opening. I almost want you to treat all your submittals right now as if there was no job opening because that will give you an opportunity to flaunt your various skills. So first, first step one, what I want you to do is I want you to get more active with my no opening cover letters. I want you to be reaching into organizations more, much, much more. So normally what I do is I like you to target the organization you want. I like you to target individuals within the organization. And even if, if you can, to the extent, target the role that you want. Okay, and that's, that's very much like my job search challenge that I've been talking about for the last month. If you're not sure what the job search challenge is, look it up on my YouTube channel where you're, where, you're, where you're becoming more and more active in contacting people. I want you to amp that up and be even more active, especially as it relates to reaching into people. You can use the boss hunting cover letter. I have a, a, a template out there. If you don't know what that is, just look, look up the video. There's a boss hunting cover letter. If you know what the role is, or if you don't know what the role is, and you should be using the one where you don't know what the role is a lot. Okay, I'm gonna get to my second point of why I want you to do that. But I want you to, I want you to, because I want you to be able to flaunt many skills that you bring to the table, not that you were citing this one specific one. I also have a no job opening cover letter. Use those, but I want you to be highly, highly active. What this will do is it will get your information in front of people who are thinking about stuff and and I want you to highlight your versatility. So lots of times, if you look at my cover letters and the ones that I've given you uh, out in the, in, the, in, the, in the public that you have access to, the ones I just mentioned, I really want you to hit your home run skill normally. However, right now, right now as we're doing this, I want you to really highlight your versatility and I want you to show an array of skills. So I come equipped with technology skills, business analyst skills, team leadership skills, or project management skills, or something like that. That's a triple threat right there. That's a person I love, okay? As opposed to, I'm a technologist who can do this. The person who gives me, who gives me the spectrum, the multifunctional person is far more valuable to me right now and the one that I'm likely to lean towards to want to have discussions with. So you got to highlight your versatility in those cover letters. You're going to need to alter them to do that. And then the third thing is because things are so dynamic right now. So I mentioned I'm planning and replanning. I'm trying to figure out who I want to hire. I guarantee you that lots of companies are going to, in an unexpected nature, lose people that they otherwise would not like to lose. Because, like I said, Jamie doesn't like the fact that she didn't get the raise, right? Susie didn't get the bonus she wanted or the promotion she wanted, right? Hen Henry's, you know, beefing about something. He's tired of his boss. It's, t it's a New Year's resolution time. I'm going to get another job. So I want to make sure that you are following up more frequently than you otherwise would be. And almost without question, every situation that you're in, don't let your follow-ups slip. If somebody says, I'll contact you Tuesday, contact them Wednesday morning. Don't give them much grace, right? If you're trying to follow up on an application or an email that you sent to somebody, you might want to compress the usual week time frame that I that I, I mentioned is a, a, a nice standard to follow throughout the year. You might want to be a little more pushy this time of year. The other thing I would recommend that you do 
in the follow-ups is when you are rejected, make sure you are following up. I would cut the time frame in half. So if you're rejected from something, I normally like you waiting 30 days to follow up. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about with the rejection, I have a video out there on, on how to get the job after being rejected. What happens is if you're getting rejected on January 2nd, I guarantee you people have left by January 7th, by January 15th, by January 22nd, by January 29th, and so on. You don't need to wait a whole month for this. So you've got to accelerate your, your, your follow-ups. Okay, so just to, just to recap it, we've got a lot of, it's very dynamic out there right now. People are thinking, rethinking, planning, replanning, and all that good stuff. And then as the weeks go by, they're going to get into it, right? I plan it, I get into it, I realize I'm right about this, I'm wrong about that, I make some changes, that changes, right? The people in the organization that I may or may not need, it changes start dates, I'm gonna lose some people, and so on. You gotta be more active with the no job opening uh, approach. You got to be highlighting your versatility. So you got to adjust your cover letters to make sure that you are pointing out the plethora of skills that you have, okay? Not just your home run skill or what you're best known for. And you got to be you got to be compressing the time frame where you follow up. All right. Now, I hope that helps. I hope it serves you and I think I think it will make a difference. I really do. And uh, and, and I want to I want to sign off here if you're loving this Click the little click the little like button or the thumbs up button. Make sure to share this. I think it's really important that people hear this message this time of year, December, January, even even bleeding into February. This is what's going on with companies. So lots of luck with that. Now, one other thing. What I just gave you, what I just gave you, this that, that was one tip, okay? And I didn't even take you down to how to make those adjustments. Uh, you probably, if you're on my email list, are getting some messages about uh, the special I have with my job search boot camp. I mean, it's almost Christmas time. Happy holidays or whatever you celebrate. It would be an awesome gift to give yourself. I know you're spending a lot of money now, right? The presents. I know, you know, my wife, she's got expensive tastes. I know the presents we're buying her and all my nine nieces and nephews. I know it's costing me an arm and a leg, but it'd be a good idea to invest in yourself uh, it, it, with with your job, I have a private group coaching session tomorrow at at the same time, 11 a.m. Central Time. And if you're in the boot camp, you can join me because not only did I create an entire module tailored to right now that's recorded that has this tip at a lower level and six or seven other things you need to do to amp up your, your, your odds of success right now. Um, but I'm also gonna be doing a live session tomorrow and we're gonna be going through all this in detail with the boot campers. So the program's on special up until uh, the start of the session tomorrow. Uh, you'll probably, you know, you might've gotten an email or two, one yesterday, one, one this morning in the, in, in the announcement of the live office hours and you're gonna get one in the morning uh, that's very short that just says, hey, last, you know, kind of last call. Uh, but I highly recommend if you're on the fence to get in. It's a great session. I got a lot of great stuff planned for the boot campers in January and in February too. But it's just it's a great time to get in. There's a lot of bonuses and, and things of that nature. So I hope you take me up on it. You're welcome to ask me any questions that you have about the program. One, a uh, couple other things. Uh, the book, Gifts, it's time of giving. I haven't pointed this out. The Interview Intervention book is uh, is... I just ordered 4,000 more copies of this thing. So, you know, I, I don't want to make it sound like you're not going to get one if you order one. You're going to get it. It's free. This $30 book, you get the ebook, the audio book, and you get some other goodies. You can jump in the private Facebook group and the private LinkedIn group and all that good stuff for $7 material and handling. That's for the envelope and the guys in the warehouse to pack it. This guy, out of reach but in sight, same deal with this one my little inspirational and motivational book. I also, this would be, this actually, I did this because I used this yesterday when I was uh, talking with uh, the construction company. They wanted to know what leadership concepts we'd covered. So they were blown away. This actually, you get a workbook in my Leadership Monthly Live program. All those tabs, I don't know if you can see that. All of those, it's probably too light. All of these tabs are the workbooks on confidence, focus, decision-making, trust, listening, building your personal brand, and a whole bunch of other topics that I covered for 49 bucks. 
a month, you jump in and you can grab it, get the career accelerator program, and and uh, well, the goal setting thing is gone now, but you can get my career accelerator program as long as you're in, or you could pay two ninety seven for the year and 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 get all of it for for half price. So 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 check those things out. I'm excited about all this. We got a ton of great stuff coming in January. We'll be giving you some announcements, you know, over the next couple of weeks. But I just, again, uh, I just want to say thanks for all the time and attention that you you give me and the Mile Walk Academy and the community. It just, it's just, it blows me away. It really does. And since we always like to know, tell you where all the Mile Walk Academy people are, Kara is not here today because she is out doing a fun run with her buddies and her husband, a 10 mile run in the cold. I don't know what's fun about that, but she's gone. And Stacy Gilmore, who you'll be hearing more and more about, our newest Mile Walk Academy employee, is got the blue wrench today. So say hi to her. And I got her on the bat line here. She's sending me some stuff here. I'm not sure what that is. I gotta look at it. But I wanna get to your I wanna get to your questions. Hang on, let me let me uh, let's see what Stacy's sending me. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. Two answers that come hands. Okay. Let me see. Let me get into the chat. But thanks. You guys are awesome. How's every, how's, how are we doing here? 131 people? Is that right? Hmm. You guys are awesome. Awesome. All right. Miss Nina from Paris. Great to see you. Hi, Andrew. I've been using short version of your boss hunting email. I'm targeting VP. I'm assuming you mean your your uh, wait. The only answer when I copy CEO are they only answer when I copy CEO? Are you surprised? Should I keep doing it? Hmm. Okay, wait. This is this is a great one. All right, hang on. Miss Nina from Paris. Uh, hi, Andy. I've been using the short version of your boss hunting email. If you're not sure what the boss hunting email is, check it out. I'm targeting the vice presidents. The only ans- they only answer when I copy the CEO. Are you surprised? Should I keep doing it? Uh, thus secured ITW in January. Okay, so I am a fan of, I'm going to give you the same advice my coach gives me. Try it out, see what works, do that. Okay, so uh, am I surprised? No, I'm not surprised and I'm not not surprised. It When you reach out to anyone, Yes, there are patterns. Yes, you will increase your odds by doing certain things. But when you copy a CEO, I personally do not think that that would influence whether somebody would respond to you. So if you sent an email to Kara or Stacy and you didn't copy me, they would be just as likely to respond to you whether you did copy me. Okay? So I don't know that that has anything to do with anything, but you could just, you could send it to both of them, right? You don't even need to cap. Just send it to both of them. Say, hey, I'm reaching out to both of you. You look like the, you know, the main peeps and um, would be interested in connecting. So I don't, I don't know that that is going to matter one way or another, but just to, to, just to kind of give you my opinion on that. Jason Garrity, my boot camper. Great to have you. Adam Stark, always nice to have you from the other side of the pond. Uh, do you have any advice to prevent over planning and getting stuck in perfectionist mode? I tend to do more thinking than doing. Uh, thanks for the help. I hope you have a great uh, festive period. Thank you for that. Uh, actually, in uh, in my leadership monthly live where I held that big binder up with all the workbooks, uh, we we talk about this. We actually help you co- overcome the perfectionist attitude. This is the this is the uh, the best way that I have found to get over perfectionism is you've just got to convince yourself that it's better to put something out into the world and try it and see what happens and then make an adjustment. The expression that I like to use is you can scale version one, you can't scale version zero. Let me give you a great example. So I just said, I just got done saying, I ordered 4,000 copies of this, okay? I I just said that. In April of 2018, so a year and a half ago, I wanted to start circulating that book. 
and give it away for free for materials and handling costs. The perfectionist in me would have said, well, make sure that if you're going to give that book away and it's free and a lot of people are just going to grab it for the $7 where I lose a lot of money, believe it or not, I lose a lot of money when you, that's okay, I'm not, that's, that's okay, I, this is my gift to the world. But I would obviously like some of those people to make sure that they actually get the book because the first thing that I want to do is I want to serve you and I want my book in your house and I want you to enjoy it or give it to your kid or your grandkid or whoever and use it in good health and get a job. And I know that some of the people that take that book will, will engage in my other training and coaching services. That's just the way the world works. Okay, great. So I hope enough of those people do that so I could buy my wife the gifts she wants for her holiday. So... At that time, uh, what I would have liked is, okay, if somebody goes and grabs the book but decides not to take it, I would like to send them a reminder to get the book. And you know what? If somebody takes the book, I would like to have a further dialogue with them about enrolling perhaps in the course. Maybe they want the interview intervention course as well and so on. Now, all of that, as far as a, a business owner and a coach or a trainer, would like to have all that in order. But guess what? I don't. I don't have any of that. And I decided it was better to just put the book out into the world and let people take it and so on. And I said to myself, I will at some point improve this and we'll we'll have a bigger dialogue. We'll have uh, more of an opportunity to introduce some other things that they could take advantage of in my universe and so on. And guess what? I've never done that in a year and a half. Now, if I would have waited to put all that in place, you none of you would have the interview intervention book for free. You might go to Amazon and get it or whatever. So I found that once I got into it, that was good and people were enjoying it. I've just kind of left it as is. So you can just go grab the book and that's it. All right, now what, what perfectionists do is they want to make everything perfect and what happens is that perfectionism, it, it's, it's obstinate to progress at all. So what I like to do is I like to put it out into the world, see what happens, see what people say, see what people want, see what people do, and then add to it. It's better to have it in motion, and I always say it's easier to redirect an object in motion than a stationary one. Think about that. So you got to do and you got to get over it. And the more you adopt an active mindset and, and, a, and, a, and a get in motion mindset, it will be easier to overcome your perfectionism. And the other things that you will find as you, as you put products, services, messages, whatever out into the world, what you will find is that it, a lot of things you worried about really don't matter. They really don't matter. And I, I'm, that message is for all you perfectionists out there. Uh, it, 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 a lot of the stuff we worry about does not matter. And this is an example is one that came to mind because, um, and the reason I shared that one with you is because it's been 18 months and I've been wanting to improve that. But I had to decide between that and something else that I want to improve for you, like my leadership program or my goals class or the career accelerator program or other things that I think would be even more valuable to you. So, so things like that. So, so you got to get in motion. Um, the, the, can I take it back to a point in the lesson? Remember this, this point I made to all of you about the follow-ups, this thing right here? So Adam and everybody else. You might want to think about, I know I'm going to get tons of questions about, well, Andy, what's the right message and all that good stuff. So when I'm following up with somebody after I've been rejected, I want to say it exactly right. It needs to be perfect and so on. It doesn't. It doesn't, you don't need a template from me. You know what needs to happen when you follow up? You just need to follow up. What you say is almost irrelevant. If they liked you to begin with and it just didn't work out and somebody left or maybe they chose a person who never showed up or whatever, if they like you, the fact that you followed up is what they want. And that's what will work. It's not all the exact language and reselling yourself. Yeah, I've given you a good script for that. But what most people would be best served by is to just send an email. Just say, hey, I'm just checking back in. Anything change? I'm, I'm, I'm still really interested in your company. That would work too. So that's what I mean about the difference between a perfectionist and, and spending a week or two longer than to, to craft that versus just sending it. And you need to, you need to adopt that, that mindset. All right, Connie Cotter, 
Uh, there you are, perfectionist right next to Adam Stark. Actually, Connie's getting better. Con Connie is a, I hope Connie's still here. Con Connie is a recovering perfectionist. And actually, maybe Connie could comment in the chat somewhere about how she has overcome this because I know she's done it successfully. By the way, speaking of, okay, so Jason is a boot camper. Connie is a boot camper. Darius is a boot camper. Darius, you need to put your, your medallion next to your name. Any of the boot campers that are out there, uh, whether you Connie's been successful, she's already several months into a new job. I know Jason and Darius are in the program now looking. Share your experience. It helps people understand what it's like to be part of that community, what it's like to get that level of information, education, the structure, the systems, all in one spot. It, uh, I know how valuable it, it can be, but, but it's one thing for me to say it. It's another thing for you guys to say it. And yes, uh, Connie, uh, Stacy is near Nolens, and so we will bring her. We will bring her to the Chicagoland area, and you can definitely come in for the next meetup. We'll have her there. All right. Yeah, Kara has. Yes, Kara has lost her mind for the day because she's out running ten miles in the cold. Listen, I'm all for that too, man. But I don't want to run ten miles in the freezing cold. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go swim ten miles in the pool. All right. Yes, blue wrench. Look at that. How good does Stacy look with that blue wrench? Hmm. All right. Speaking of speaking of Connie Connor, the recovering perfectionist, my brother-in-law. Uh, wait, hold on. That's not it. One or two. Ra okay. Connie's saying wrapping up the year, looking at my achievements journal, as well as what I want my goals for 2020. I love that. Makes me so happy. Only a few of my projects have an end date. I have milestones along the way. Uh, should I keep adding content to the project or row, or is it important to bucket it into time periods such as work completed, lessons learned? I think you can do whatever is appropriate for you. So in my life, I like to have end dates to my projects. So wait, the sample I just gave you about the interview intervention book and how I wish I had it more uh, streamlined and, and complete for all of you. Getting it launched initially so that it could get into your hands, that's a, an end date, but it lives on, right? So so somewhere along the way, I added uh, a, like a little bump to the opportunity where you could actually grab the interview intervention course for 66 or 70% off, okay? Like that's a second version. That was a short project. It was done in three minutes, but it was done. And then that's helped a bunch of you. Now, the next iteration of this is how do we make it so that more people can find that book, more people can benefit from it, more people might use that as an opportunity to get comfortable with, with me and my teaching and my approach and the value I can bring them that might lead to other things and so on. Each one of the, while it's the same project, there's just project and I decided to make an end date there for that version, and then it's version 1.0 and version 1.1, and now it's gonna be version 2.0 and so on. I'm guessing you have maintenance things that you're doing. You also have methodologies that you're building, other things that you're QAing and reviewing. So yes, I, I, would, I would do that. And if people do not know what Connie is talking about with the achievements journal, is I have a career achievements journal that I recommend that you use to log 14 pieces of information about each one of your projects. Your project could be a day, it could be a month, it could be a year, it could be multiple years. But there's 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 important information that you want to capture, number one, so that, that you have all the context around the project. The second thing is it is a wonderful um, uh, help aid to identify key pieces of information that you can then populate in multiple places such as your corporate database, a succession planning database, or a work history of what Connie or anybody else has done. It also will serve you to put on your resume because this is the stuff that all of you say, Andy, I can't remember those details. That's right, because you didn't capture them when you did them. And what else? In your, in your stories, when you're telling uh, your stories in your job interviews, being able to pull this information off the top of your head is awesome because it paints a vivid picture in the interviewer's mind of what it was that you did. It's just great stuff. And where else can you use it? In your annual reviews, in your quarterly reviews, reminding people 
who should remember this or know this, who don't really pay attention to all the things that go along with it, it's great to surface. It's just a really neat tool. And there's a video that goes along with it. If you just Google La Civita Career Achievements Journal, you'll find it. All right. Karthik, how you doing? Silent fly on the wall. Shame on you, my friend. We like chatty people. Live sessions, Andy, and consumed all your free content with glee. Top quality value. Well, thank you. I would assume it's valuable, especially if it's all free. And for those who need a little more handholding, your paid offers are there. That's true. All good. You are welcome. I had asked you in the past about me being a senior IT consultant in the UK and wanting to move to sunny California for a change of scenery and emigrate for good. Although you told me in the past to join a UK firm. I, no, I didn't tell you. I said that as a suggestion to help you with the visa issues that you will undoubtedly encounter. Uh, and using them, move to the USA, still going to use your CV and cover letters and so on. Awesome. That's awesome. Carolyn Eastley, how are you? Uh, make sure, to, guys, make sure to put, I try to go through these slowly, but please make sure to put question marks in front of your questions. I work in the welding fabrication field and companies have raised the hiring standards, okay? You are required to take a mechanical aptitude test prior to a weld test. Can you recommend the best study? Carolyn, I do not know. Uh, I'd love to tell you I do. I don't know what a mechanical aptitude test would be. Uh, Mr. Google is going to know more than, than I do. I wish I could tell you what to do there or if I had a suggestion. It's just not my field of expertise. It, I mean, that, that down to that level uh, of what I would do, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. My guess is there is probably some general uh, mechanical and welding concepts that you need to know. And, and uh, I'm assuming it's probably a test that they derive themselves. That would be my guess. Steve, how are you? Yes. And Stacy's got, um, uh, it, it, Stacy help, is helping me out here. I am going through the chat for this, uh, for the live show. I know for some of the special events, um, for some of the special events that I, we try to go topically, uh, but I'm, I'm just reading straight down. So make sure you are putting question marks in because I'm, I'm trying to buzz through. I really want to give you a lot of, a lot of help today. Hey, Sherry. Sherry's a boot camper. John's a boot camper. Great stuff. Miso. Good morning. You. Good morning to you. Should a nurse staffing agency approach a meeting with a potential client the same way as an employee interview? Is there anything we should do differently? Slideshow, et cetera. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little uncertain what you... Um, I'm assuming you mean you are approaching a nurse staffing agency. Uh, Misa, I'm not sure what you're asking me here. Are you approaching the nurse staffing agency or do you work for the nurse staffing agency and you're approaching a client for whom you want to staff nurses? Uh, those are two completely different answers. If you could head to the end and clarify what that is, I'll be happy to... You know, Stacy can slack it to me, and I'll be happy to to address it. Bethany, hey, oh, get out of here! Thirty eight degrees. Great to great to great to see you, though. I'm assuming you're my Bethany from Frenchies. <laughs> Karthik, should your LinkedIn profile match your CV word for word? No. LinkedIn has a summary section. Use it. Uh, career profile. Yeah, just cherry pick. You do not need you. You need to get the key key words. Key key words in your LinkedIn profile. Do not make it as lengthy. Nobody. So, as a recruiter, nobody, nobody, and I mean nobody, is going to read your LinkedIn profile just like they don't read your resume. And if your first contact with them is the, the resume or your CV. If they look at your LinkedIn profile, which is probable, they're gonna buzz through it. And they're likely gonna be looking through it to see who you know, not what you know. Got that? Okay, now, if your first encounter is your LinkedIn 
profile. And when I say encounter, I mean if their first discovery of you is because they proactively were searching for something. Remember, how do people find you? The same way you found me. I'm guessing there's 128 of you on here that 127 of you did not look up Andrew Lasavita. You looked up, I'm having some resume problems. And then this guy popped up and there I was, right? That's what a recruiter does in LinkedIn. They don't look for you. They're usually looking for project manager, technologist, database architect, Salesforce administrator, and so on. Okay, so they're gonna pull, come to you, and here's here here's how the mind works. Picture first. First thing anybody looks at is the picture that pops up. It is every time. So have a good one, right? Like bang. Wait in the search. Uh, results first thing I see all the pictures or not and then you have your title headline that's the second thing then they click on it then they open it up then your pictures bigger okay then they zip down and they look through it then what stinks about LinkedIn is your summary is not always expanded so somebody has to proactively do that I mean at least it was last time I checked which was not too long ago and then they're looking through. Now they might see some of the other things that you have attached to your profile. So if your summary's like this, and then they have to expand it, but like if you go to my profile, what are you gonna see? You see my headline, and actually a picture of me is in the headline. Now now for some of you that's not maybe not appropriate, but it's because of my business. And then there's my, fit my picture, and those look similar. And then there's a summary that's compressed, which you probably can't see too much of. And then there's a row of different attachments. And there's probably me on TV, a Mile Walk Academy uh, catalog that highlights the things we have in the, in, in the Mile Walk Academy universe, a few other things. And there's a suite of stuff. It is important for them to see that. That stuff is not on your resume. But hey, that's a sweet line. It's like six different links and pictures and things that dress up your LinkedIn profile. You can put articles that you've written there. You can put LinkedIn articles that you've written there. Okay, you can put on LinkedIn, you can do a long form post and attach it to the top if you want. Then you go into the articles. You should have some articles that you've written so that those are there and, and people can see them. If you go to mine, you're gonna see an article about how to fast track your career change or something like whatever one of the more recent ones that I put out on LinkedIn and then it'll go into the body and then my body is only going to give you so much that to me is the ideal LinkedIn profile that distribution and so you're not putting all your bullet points you might put one little paragraph and so on but I hope I hope that helps you that's a great great question very confusing without a doubt without a doubt all right Andrew, how you doing? Great to have you in the boot camp. Gary Black, how are you? Jamie, where you been? <laughs> I'm not looking for a job. <laughs> Dare you can come over anytime. You were so nice to me on YouTube, I love it. Shima, my new boot camper, how are you? Evelyn, oh, stolen back her message. That's a boot camper there from New York. Hey, y'all. Kyle Williams, how you doing, buddy? That was, Kyle, that was one of the nicest, um, uh logs in the mile walk academy in the boot camp about how you know when you're when you're feeling stuck you just go in there and listen to me and you know i mean i just love that actually i think i might have cut clip that out and uh and, and put that in one of the emails i think maybe people will get that tomorrow so nice uh karthik more questions for the andy meister i plan to put two lines on me being in the uk immediately after career highlights section that way, a U.S.-based HR person uh, can choose to carry on or reject me. Do you feel this kind of honesty will be appreciated? Uh, actually, I would put the U.K. thing up at the top of the resume, and that would be it. I would not be putting the fact that you are in the U.K. in anywhere in, inside the resume. It's just being the address area. Amir, how are you? Kelly, great to see you, my boot camper. Dave Wong, my boot camper. Tan, hey. Lots of Canadian. Oh, no, it's Tan Vancouver. I, are you in Vancouver, Tan, or are you just Tan Vancouver? John, how are you? 
Karthik again, fo focusing on HR personnel and not recruiters. I feel HR will be more amenable to considering a visa sponsorship. Actually, it's the other way around. Uh, HR people will be less inclined to want to give you a visa. Recruiters wouldn't waste their time. I would First off, I would not contact recruiters at all, uh, meaning third party. And corporate or internal, I would not contact them. I would contact hiring officials. You need a sponsor, no pun intended. So you need a champion, right, to say, I need this guy. You got to go after the hiring officials. Miss Nina from Paris, I have an interview with a company after the new year. Good luck for you, to you. Should I network in the company to prepare? Do not do that. Do not do that. Go in and wow them. Go, do not, do not uh, try to get intel from employees that you do not know before you go into an interview. It's a real faux pas. If you uh, know somebody that knows people that work there and they want to make an intro and that person inside the company is receptive to talking to you, that's different. But do not cold contact employees at a company that you are interviewing. Bad, bad move. All right. Sophie Hay, you rock too. Love my Toronto people. Steve G's a Toronto person. Hey, Lorenzo. Abdul, how are ya? Hanyan, my boot camper. Hey. All right. Amir, you're a good, good dude, man. Thank you, Andrew. Yes, my wife and I, we've been together six years and, uh, and married four today. I just love her. I wish she was on here right now. Susan, how are you? Thanks, John, for the good wishes. Kelly, too. Gary Blackburn. Hey, Andy, love what you do, and especially the energy you bring. Thank you. In my Leadership Monthly program, there's a whole module and lesson on energy, and I think that that is a big, big deal. Speaking of, okay, for those of you that just joined recently, got a special with the Job Search Boot Camp. It would be the greatest gift you can give yourself. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, we've got like, we had like 36 live shows with the boot campers, private boot camper shows this year. It really was a lot of fun. I'm mean, five of those were the career accelerator program that we created, but I'm always thinking up new stuff to give you. It's really a great thing. Uh, Stacy, maybe drop the um, link in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, you'll get one last email from me tomorrow if you want to get it before the year ends and join us. And uh, let's see, I think Stacy's sending me. All right, so Stacy is clarifying the MISO uh, question. So MISO was asking if they, sh if, if, uh, to use a slide deck or do anything differently when the staffing agency is trying to pitch uh, its services. Uh, I, as a as a Mile Walk Academy, or, sorry, Mile Walk, the recruitment firm that I own, uh, it depended. So was I talking to one person and pitching my services, or the Mile Walk ser recruitment services? Uh, lots of times, I had literally. I would bring a booklet like this, um, and it would be the mile walk booklet. It would have tabs, and I would show them the methodology, how we went about what we did. I would show them the candidate profile documentation that we supply, and so on, and I can flip them through this. That's if it's one person or maybe two people. If it's several people, that's a little odd that it would be that many people, but if it was, uh, I would use slides. So I hope that helps. All right. Let's see. Um, just trying to zip through here. Rachel, how you doing? Lorenzo, great to see you. You are welcome. Abdul, hey. The cash from New Delhi. Awesome. And let me see. 
Asheron, are in 21 years. Wonderful. That's awesome. Rachel from Maryland, clinical research. I just, by the way, can I say this again? Because I said it like almost an hour ago. But I, I really mean, and I mean this. And I, I hope, you know, I wish I could hug all of you, right? One to one. And you can come to my workout table, my work table right there, and we sit and laugh for a few hours. But you all mean the world to me. It does. The community matters. Each one of you individually, the community as a whole, I cannot, I'm blown away by how supportive you are. I know you all have your own issues, just like I have issues and problems, and aspirations, just like I have aspirations. And it just, it means the world to me that you spend so much time with me, that you read my emails, or, or even the ones, you know, when you remark on the emails, or the YouTube comments, or the shows like this, or whatever. It just, uh, it makes me a better coach. It makes me a better teacher. It helps me get better to help more people, the way I package my message, all that good stuff, and you all keep me current on what's going on. But the thing that blows me away is the diversity. 40% of you are outside the U.S. Half of the people on my YouTube channel are outside the U.S., so I can't get over the global nature. I can't get over the diversity in the, in the geography, the culture, the functions you guys perform, your expertise, and the age demographics that go all the way from with high schoolers to people in their 70s. And we were getting comments last week from people who are starting new careers in their 70s. It just blows me away. I love it. Kyle, you are in Detroit. Thank you for that good wish. All right, we've got a question here. Abdilla, Ab, I think that's how you say your name, I'm not sure. Uh, hi, Nasir from Nairobi, East Africa. Awesome. I'm a medicinal chemist, PhD student, eyeing a job in the developed world. What will sell me as an African scientist? Honestly, not to be funny, but the fact that you are an African scientist in and of itself brings expertise that otherwise is not available from people who have not dealt with the issues that you have in your in your homeland. And so I always try to tell people everything that you have been through. We we had a uh, I had three I had several coaching sessions in the last 10 days, but three of the individuals, two women and a and a and a, and a man had these varied background. I don't know if they're here on this session, but had these varied backgrounds. And what I tried to explain to them, just like I would I would say to you, uh, Nasir, is when you look at what you've done in your career, you automatically need to be thinking about how to tell your story in a positive light. So when you interview and you want to set yourself apart, the fact that you do not have not worked in this developed location or that developed location as much so is not a detriment it's about bringing what you've seen to help people in the developed cities towns whatever it is areas regions expand their knowledge so the things that you do all have assets it's the story you share and the way you control that story or control that narrative about how whoever it is is interviewing you can benefit from your experience and how that helps add value and gets you better. That's the way you need to do it. I mean, the fact that you are a scientist, right? You, 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 are, you are a chemist. Obviously, you've done a lot of research. You've actually done the work, right? You, I'm sure you've evaluated and you've done studies and other things. All of that stuff is valuable. So it's the the things that you've done so the research that you've done there's ways you go about it there's methods and practices you've learned that that's a skill that's something you can advertise and then all of the other people that come from wherever they come from they've done those things too okay i understand that but you have that as well so that's part of your story and now can you find out is there something unique about the way that you researched surveyed gathered the data analyzed it, and so forth, which is all the same activities that somebody else would do. As an example, 
Uh, and we just got done with me. So we were talking about like um, the way in which I would pitch my services to a, a, uh, a, pr- a prospective client who wanted to enlist us for our recruitment services. And one of the things that I would say is we're a search firm just like everybody else, right? You ask us for a person, we go out and we find that person. We bring the person back to you, right? Everybody does that. Neutralize it. Get it out of the way. But here's what makes us different. And then the story's told. And here's what happens behind the scenes, lifting up the covers that nobody does. And do you know how I know nobody does this? Because every time I pitch this to somebody, they tell me they've never seen anything like it. I know that, right? And I'm going to tell you why this is unique, why this works, and why it's incredibly potent in my hands and no one else's. So that's my story. So the way you research, the way you analyze, the way the discoveries you've made, and so can be unique, even though everybody else does it. But then you have to add in the fact that your location has introduced things to you that no one else could have seen unless they were an African scientist. That's what you got to do. Think about it that way. Your story And again, in my leadership program, the last session we just did was on personal branding. And part of what I just shared with you are things that you need to think about when you brand yourself. So it's not just branding yourself online and the way you write articles and what your social media platform looks like. It's about how you tell your story. That's your brand as well. How you network is your brand. Who you communicate with online and offline is your brand and so on. This is a great question. Fantastic question. And I, I think I think I broaden that to the bigger to you know to, to the bigger picture that where a lot of people can benefit from. You all need that. So I hope that helped. All right, friendly fire. Hey, looking for holiday employment. No doubt. And thank you, Connie, for that. Jeff Kidwell, how are you? Sophie, meet so you're welcome. Shima, thanks. Kum Kum, is that how you say your name? Uh, Danville, California. I'm currently looking for a product manager role. Can you please advise what steps I should take? So, Kum Kum, I, candidly, my job search challenge, we, uh, I released, we did a five-day live event, nine-hour program on this. And uh, that's gone. Unless you're in the boot camp, you can have that. Uh, I do have a 36-minute video, I think it is, out on my YouTube channel. The job search challenge is what you need to do regardless of whether you're looking for a product manager role or any other role. So I would check check that out. Lynn, how are you? Susan Kelly, how are you? Uh, Gary Blackburn. Jamie, help. My husband and I are moving to Seattle from Portland. Okay, it's like you're moving down the block. For a promotion within my work. Awesome. My husband is just starting out in computer science and IT. What are your recommendations for jobs in a new city? Indeed isn't great. So, Jamie, two things. The job search challenge I just mentioned is is good. Do that. And part of the job search challenge is reaching out and leveraging your network. But a big part of the job search challenge is generating a new network where you don't have one. That's what he needs, okay, for sure. And then the other thing is you can uh, check my video out on how to find an out-of-state job. Don't worry about that it's out. It's still in state uh, or you're moving from Seattle to to Portland, so you're moving across states, whatever, but it it applies. And I'm just saying this for everybody's benefit, whether you're looking for a job in another town, another country, or whatever, or somebody like you, how to find an out-of-state job, and I give you the nine steps. It's really it's really good. Do that. Bill from Vermont, Tan Vancouver. Hi, Dan. Dan from New York. So you're not Tan Vancouver. You're Dan from New York City. Oh, man. All right. Great speaking with you. On, okay. So that was really funny, and now I know your handle, Daniel. All right. I'm 14 years of financial services. Great to... Yeah. Uh, so on Sunday morning... Uh, I was uh, getting ready to run out and I had a, uh, the water guys were supposed to call me and on the mile walk line and Dan from NYC called me and I picked the phone up and we ended up talking for half an hour. Don't, I don't normally pick my phone. <laughs> so that's funny. Oh my God. Uh, I'm 14 years of financial services, wealth management, got a seven month severance. Yes, I know all that. Looking to pivot to financial technology. Any suggestions? You, my friend, need to. 
go watch the career changer module in the boot camp that's my suggestion i'll see you tomorrow all right good morning is my chat working on my end it doesn't look like it sherry it apparently is and i love that beautiful picture that you put of yourself in the mile walk academy system i see you found that out i love that picture it's it's a and i think that's your picture right there shanty hey all right dan that's tan vancouver uh during my time off i reconnected with family created a health app so do i put the app uh, on top after my financial services experience i would probably not um here's what i would do so you you took a little time off and um what you what you could do in your career profile is like the very last thing just say you know during um you know time off or during hiatus or whatever you want to say it created uh app uh to whatever whatever the app was returning to work after whatever and or you can put that in the uh at the bottom of your resume i wouldn't put it at the top all right Karthik, want to reach out to CXO level position as an agile product and process transformation expert. Is it better to look at VP or director or product management as the next step right now, a team at team coach level? Uh, so it's difficult for me to tell you what your best next step is. And those titles don't uh, translate across different com companies. So I don't ever look at title. Like I don't ever care about your title. I don't care what you're called. I care what you do, and I genuinely think my suggestion to you as your coach is to care about what the makeup of your job or your role looks like, not what it's called, okay? People are so concerned that I need to have, like, I need to be an analyst and then a senior analyst and then a jun whatever and then a junior manager and then a manager and then a director and then a VP and then a That's all nonsense. Don't, don't pay any attention to that. Okay, and anybody who does pay attention to that is very short-sighted, and that organization is likely going to be filled with political crap. So I would be more focused on what is it that you want to do, what does that look like, and if you want to figure out what that might be called in different organizations. One person's manager could be more senior than another, or one company's manager could be way more senior than another person's vice president. So I don't, I don't really look, I don't, I don't pay a lot of attention to titles. And when I'm, as a re recruiter, when I look at titles, I don't even pay any attention, any attention to that stuff. I don't really care what you're called. I, I skip over the titles and I try to look at the companies and then what you did. So hope that helps. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, Bow or Boa. PM from Tampa? How come you didn't make the meetup a week or two ago? Happy anniversary to you. I just want to let you know I used your video to learn and to play in the background for the motivational energy during my job. I love that. I especially love, you know, a lot of people tell me that they listen to me in their cars. I listen to my coaches in my car when I'm driving around, and I, I love it. I, I, I almost stop, have st I love music and the radio and all that good stuff, but I practically stop listening to it every time I drive around. I'm, I've got YouTube on my phone uh, rolling. Hey, Carrie Freeman. Amir, hey, let's see. Alina, I'm a boot camper from California. When interviewing with multiple people and receive a rejection, reply to all in a single message. So when you receive a rejection, just reply to whoever sent the rejection. Then what I would do is I would send those individuals. So 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 if if it I'm assuming the sequence of events is you went in for a panel interview or a group interview. You then left, and what I would have assumed you did is sent thank you notes to everybody individually. Then you got a rejection email. If you sent, if you got the rejection email before you sent your thank you notes, that's possible, right? I would simply send a the rejection email, meaning the rejection email that I recommend you send goes to whoever sent you the rejection and the hiring official, those two together, okay, send the rejection email to them. Literally, don't even bother with the thank you. Just send the rejection protocol to them. Then all the other people send individual emails like they're your thank yous and say, thank you for your time. And I, I really feel I was a strong fit because I did receive 
uh, information that you've decided, you know, to move on or whatever, select somebody else or I wasn't a great fit, whatever, and just thank you and I would be interested in staying in touch with you should anything change. Something like that. Individually. Individually. All right, Tony P. Great to see you a couple weeks ago. Or last, I mean, man, my days are running like great. What? When was that? The 19th. Must have been what? The, the two weeks ago. Okay. Um, let me get buzz in here. Let me see. All right. Susan Kelly. Why do organizations post unicorn job descriptions, laundry list of specific software rather than the skills needed, for example, data engineer rather than every tool a data engineer uses? Susan, I wish I had the answer to that. I don't because they actually think they're going to get somebody like that or they just think that it's important for you to know all the things they want. And what I would also do is that's not the question that I think ultimately needs to be answered to benefit you because that's all speculation and I don't know and I don't know what good that's going to do you. What I would say is as a data engineer, if you are a data engineer, do you know what the most important skills are that you feel that that company needs? If you have those skills based on your knowledge and expertise in that area, in that market, in that function, and so on, do you feel you have them? If the answer is yes, then apply. That's what I would do. Phyllis, how are you? Deborah, how are you? Boot campers galore right there. Jasmine, how are you? How do you make yourself seen as a fixer-upper without being a superwoman wanting to resolve everything? Uh, I'm not really sure how to answer that. I, I, You either are a doer or a fixer or you're not. Nacio, hey. Uh, big comps recruiters make barriers purposely not to provide content. Wait, uh, big company recruiters make barriers purposely not to provide contacts recruiters and hiring managers info for folks looking how to address that i would not be trying to get the information from them i would be doing my own detective work check out the job search challenge i show you how to do it there all right and yes i i i appreciate stacy kicking in there if you do like what we're rolling through here folks click the little like button click the share button and uh and 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 let us know what you need and if I, um, we're going to be on for a few more minutes here. If, if I don't get to your questions today, YouTube records this. As soon as I hit the end button and say so long, it'll, it'll be on, on the YouTube channel. Just drop your, your comments or your questions in there. And just so you know, every, every day I answer all the questions in the Milewalk Academy system for the paying members. I then go to my blog and my YouTube channel and whoever is subscribed to my YouTube channel, I answer them first. So YouTube has nice little uh, ability for us creators to see who's subscribed. And then I say, can you tell me all the comments I have not responded to who are subscribers of this channel? And then I filter those first. Then based on however much time I have available, I go through and I answer as many of those as I can. And if I've got any time left, I just keep going to the ones who are not subscribed to the channel, but I, I rarely get to those. So I really hope you do subscribe. I want you to have this weekly goodness. I want you to come to the live shows. I want you to get all the new new stuff. All right. Alina, obstacles are detours in the right direction. MWA job search is a sanity saver. Thank you. Each rejection gets me closer to where I'm meant to be. Thank you, Andy, for an, an all invaluable lessons and support. Alina, you are welcome. And uh, next time I'm out in Orange County, I'm going to have you give me a swimming lesson and I'm going to give you a coaching lesson. But we got to go in the ocean to do it, okay? Because the swimming pool is getting too easy for me. I need, I need like sun and wind and not being able to see and salt water in my mouth. <laughs> hey, Tina, how are you? Shanty, hey. Shanty, how do you join the Job Search Boot Camp? Look at that. Stacy's right there. All you need to do, folks, the, 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 the discount is already on the page. It's normally $5.97, and I like to run uh, you know, reasonably frequently specials for $4.97, but there are a lot of times where the special's not running. So, so get in, jump in the session tomorrow, 
it's Q and A just for the boot campers. So obviously there's a lot less than 145 people that are here now. So I can, I'm able to get through everybody's question in a couple of hours. So, you know, we have only so many people can show up to the live sessions too. So it's really, it's really pretty sweet deal. All right. Sherry. Yes, I can't believe you're 60. That just blows my mind. Um, I have to go back to work. Is it possible to change jobs? It is. Uh, sorry uh, if this came through more than once. So, Sherry, what I would say is I, I, believe, uh, I believe you were retired and then you, I think you were working, you had your family company, then you retired, now you're going back. I think that's, you. I, I still have a bunch of stories to read. I think that might be you. Um, and if so, I would think about what I love to do and where your assets, so what do I love and what do I want to do? What are my assets? Look for that intersection. And what value can I provide to organizations and what do they need? That's your kind of your third ring in the Venn diagram. And and I would I would, Consider that. I would also watch the Career Changer module in the boot camp, which you have access to. And I would pay special attention to that module and the first module, the main module in the boot camp, module number one, that's all about the self assessments, the drivers, the why, the requirements, and all that stuff. Bill Young, you're welcome. And I think I got all that. Get some sleep, Jasmine. Shauna, employer I interviewed with keeps updating me on their process. I think they're just keeping me open as an option. Well, first off, Shauna, if 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 an employer is in touch with you, that's a good sign. That's a really good sign. Most of the time, you're off wondering what the hey, right? So I don't I don't mind that. And I would not overthink it and for Sean and everybody else, if you are executing the job search book, uh, sorry, job search challenge, uh, there's a recent, like I said, it's a recent video. This is what everybody should be doing right now. If you are in motion with a an employer and you're trucking along, if you're doing the job search challenge and you're contacting three companies a day, in one week you've contacted 21 more companies. And if this company is communicating with you and saying, hey, Shauna. We're, uh, we've got another candidate coming in. It's going to be a few more days. In three days, we're going to call you, whatever. So what, right? By that time, by the time they call you, you have 10 more companies. So, you know, I, I, I like that. My, my, my thoughts are any company that is communicating with you, that's a good sign. It really is. And if nothing else, it's good to know that they're taking the time to email you and, 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 and get you, give you the phone calls. That's good stuff. All right, hang on. Let me see. Andrew La Resume. <laughs> What's up? That's awesome. Oh my god. Uh, Andrew, I do not remember missing your question. Hopefully, I got it. I don't. I I, I thought I was pretty pretty on top of it. Uh, unrepentant Drew. So Andrew, if uh, if I missed your question, uh, you can either go in the comments comments here or what I'd really rather you do is go in to either join me tomorrow at the boot camp because I know you're a boot camper or, or or put it in the comments in the mile walk academy system if I missed your if I missed your question okay folks real quick boot camp special ends tomorrow if you're not sure you want to get in hit the page check it out if you got any questions support at milewalk.com grab the books the, the $7 shipping and handling, materials and handling, whatever you want to call it. Actually, I pay for the shipping. You pay for materials and handling. Um, yes. Okay, wait. And Stacy is telling me that I should explain something, and she's right. Okay, wait, so get that. Now, so, uh, if, if you cannot make the boot camp session tomorrow, the benefit of joining the boot camp is, number one, you got all the assets. The boot camp is not just about a one-time live coaching session. It happens that I'm going to be talking about current events, current trends right now at this time of the year and adjustments you need to make. However, if you join the boot camp, you get every session I ever teach the boot campers, any live session that I do as we go throughout the year, all go into a string. They're all recorded for you. You can see what all the topics are. And there's a module in the boot camp. There's a bonus module where I've already packaged 
all the things you need to do during this time of year. So getting the boot camp now is the benefit is you get the money off. You can join me tomorrow. If you can't make the session tomorrow, it's all recorded for you. And then you can kind of roll through it through the holidays, which I think is a great time to, to go through it. And then we've got more live sessions starting up later in January. But that's a that's a good that's a good one. Um actually let me I, I do want to answer I do want to answer Andrew's question because he's a boot camper and we do these things for our boot campers. All right. Uh, Drew's asking me, I've worked in a place that was very religious and I'm not. How can I skill, skillfully dodge the question, where do you go to church in an, in an office environment? Um, first off, first off, that is an illegal question to ask in, in an interview. And if, if it's being, um, it, you know, if it's being asked, if somebody asked me that, uh, I would say, you know what, I am a very, very spiritual person and I, you know, I, I think everybody, you know, should should go and worship wherever it is that they want. I worship every day at my house. I mean, I don't, like, I don't, I don't, first off, that's not a question that legally should be an- asked or answered. And if you're, if you're working in a place, uh, you know, so I, I've worked in a place that was very religious and I'm not, this, I think this is the least of your worries right now. I would not be too, too worried about the likelihood that you're going to be asked that question in an interview process. I really don't. Um, and then there's a question here about any tips on body language. I've got a book coming in on the subject, but would appreciate your advice as well. Guess what? On Tuesday, as in, right, in four days or whatever, you're getting a body language lesson. So let's hold that. I'm actually, yeah, I like, I'm right as rain, man. I, I understand it's Christmas Eve for a lot of you and me, but Tuesday morning at 6.30, you're getting an email. And New Year's Eve at 6.30, you're getting an email with another lesson on how to give a presentation in an, in an interview. I got some good stuff coming for you guys. So, so I hope that helps everybody. I just, I can't thank you enough for all the time and attention that you, that you give me. Harley, Harley, you want to say hi? Wait, there, there's Harley. He's, he's saying, Daddy, it's time for lunch. So I'm going to sign off. You guys be great. Have a great weekend. All you boot campers, I'll see you tomorrow. And if you're on the fence, get in. It's the best Christmas present or holiday present you can give yourself. All right, take care. See you soon.